Hi, I'm Kim Stevens here in the Fox 26 newsroom. Today, when we are covering uh, matters that not only are important to women, but really our whole family and our family of friends is our health and our breast health. And there are times that there needs to be a reconstruction. And so, and that can be a daunting place to be in one's life. So instead, what I'd like to do is talk with Dr. Eric Lemker with Community Regional Medical Center to help us better understand uh, breast reconstruction, uh, why a woman would need it, and what some of the um, types are, risks are, recovery is, and future after that. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Lemker. Thanks for having me on the show, Kim. How long have you been involved in uh, breast reconstruction? Uh, so I'm going on 11 years now in uh, plastic surgery practice and breast reconstruction is the major part of what, what I do. Okay, and what is it, uh, what are some of the reasons why a uh, woman would come in and, and need a reconstruction? So breast reconstruction is uh, usually done after either a ma uh, full mastectomy or a partial mastectomy. Uh, and the reason it's done is that we know that it uh, greatly increases uh, the women's uh, psychosocial health. Uh, it, it can help restore confidence, uh, make her feel better in clothing, allow her to buy clothing that fits. Uh, and so we know that this has a huge impact on the quality of life for that patient. After a mastectomy, how, how long must a patient wait before they go through the reconstruction process? Uh, so most of the time we try to do it at the same time as the mastectomy so that the patient doesn't have to wake up uh, feeling deformed or, or flat. Uh, there are individual um, nuances to it. And so sometimes we do have to do it in a delayed fashion. Uh, but I would say the, the vast majority of the time we're able to do it uh, at the same time. Okay. Well, and there are different kinds because I, I think one of the first ways people might automatically think of is maybe adding an implant, but there are other ways too. Can we start with what is a flap reconstruction? Well, a, a flap simply means that we move tissue from somewhere else on your body to the breast position uh, to help recreate the breast. I think there are probably people who'd say, uh, I've got some uh, extra area on my body I'd love for you to take. Is it as simple as that or it needs to be, I mean, is it, what what kind of tissue so are you looking for? We're, we're constrained by uh, blood supply and, and anatomy, uh, but typically the lower abdomen is is the uh, first choice if we're gonna move, move that tissue. Uh, we can also take it from the back uh, it can be done from the inner thigh or uh, buttocks area. Uh, it just depends on where where the best donor site is. It's going to depend on previous surgeries that the patients had. Um, and so those are conversations that we would we would have uh, in the office. Okay. And then an implant. There are uh, are there a couple of different kinds of implants. There there are lots of different varieties of implants. We have over 300 different sizes and shapes to choose from. Uh, and our goal is to, to fit that to the woman's body. Um, and ultimately with a, with a consultation, uh, we would discuss the different types. We would discuss what her goals are and then help her choose what's, what's the right type for her. Are, uh, I, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with implants. I remember through the years as we've reported on them that there were silicone and saline. Is that still the case? Yeah, that's, that's still the case. It's usually a silicone outer shell and then the fill is with either saline or silicone. Okay. Okay. And then the oncoplastic, what is that? Uh, so this is usually done uh, after a partial mastectomy and it's something to help uh, prevent contour deformities of the breast. Uh, and so it's very, very individualized. It may involve either moving uh, tissue uh, in the area to help fill the uh, spot that the breast surgeon removed, uh, mm -hmm. or may, may involve doing essentially like a breast reduction, uh, kind of moving tissue around and rearranging it so that we get a better contour to the breast. Okay. Now you're talking about the body of it, but what about the nipple? 
And so uh, again, uh, it's very individualized. Some patients uh, are able to keep their nipple. Uh, some patients have to have it removed. It's gonna uh, depend on the patient's desires, uh, what the breast surgeon needs to do, and then uh, overall contour uh, of the breast before the surgery, uh, whether or not we can get that uh, into a uh, aesthetically normal position. Uh, and so it, it really just depends on, on uh, uh, individual patients. If it does need to be removed, uh, there are things that we can do to reconstruct it. Sometimes it might be as simple as just a tattoo. Uh, other times uh, we do a small procedure that gives a little bit of projection to the nipple, and then the tattoo artist can, can tattoo the areola around it. Hmm. Uh, what about sensation? Do you lose feeling? So un unfortunately, with a mastectomy, you do lose feeling uh, to most of the skin and the nipple areolar complex. Mm -hmm. uh, there uh, are ways, um, this is kind of really the forefront of breast reconstruction. Uh, and I wouldn't say that it's mainstream yet. There are ways that plastic surgeons are attempting to uh, return sensation uh, to the breast skin. Um, so that's something exciting to, to look for forward to over the rest of my career. Okay, great. Well, now let's talk about um, what are some of the risks. Uh, first one would be bleeding. How messy <laughs> of a, a surgery is this? So uh, like any, any surgery, these surgeries um, have risks of bleeding or infection, fluid collections, uh, breast asymmetry. And what I would say is uh, it really depends on the type of breast reconstruction uh, the patient is going through. Uh, Implant-based reconstruction, those are smaller procedures and they carry lower risks, whereas using your own tissue, uh, they tend to be longer procedures um, that uh, carry a higher risk of bleeding. Um, in general, though, it's, uh, it's not typically life-threatening bleeding. It would be more, uh, sometimes we might need to return to the operating room uh, or sometimes a blood transfusion. Do you recommend that women give some of their own blood and kind of bank it first before they have a reconstruction surgery? Um, so that, that would be a, that's a great question, Kim, but I, I think that um, that would be a topic that could probably use its own show. Uh, there are some challenges uh, uh, to, oh. to direct donation. Um, and so it, oh. it's typically uh, not something that we, we are able to do. Fortunately, it's very unusual oh. to, to need a blood transfusion uh, to be honest, I, I can't think of anybody uh, in the last five years that that I've needed to, to give one to. So. Oh, OK. Well, that sure is reassuring. Um, so another risk can be asymmetry. The what the fluid, the, the body can kind of move and maybe one would end up being a little bigger or out of, you know, well. Yeah, there's a, a lot of things that a lot of things that go into that. Uh, most patients aren't symmetric to start with. Uh, the breast surgeons we work with are really, really great uh, surgeons, uh, but sometimes they might take different amounts from, from the two different sides if they're operating on both sides. Uh, radiation is going to uh, cause a fibrosis reaction. Uh, it's going to kind of shrink and tighten the breast that, that gets radiated. Um, we may only be operating on one side and trying to match the native breast on the other side. So it's a very uh, customized thing that... Um, uh, that's why it's such a, a process and not just one procedure. Uh, it's because we're, we're trying to uh, match things best as we can. And it really just depends on uh, what's going on with the other side and uh, what, what treatment the patient is getting for, for breast cancer. Yeah, that's right. So, okay. Let's say you have a mastectomy and your next move is to go through radiation and or chemo. Can you do that with a reconstructed breast or do you have to have that treatment first before your reconstruction? So we work in conjunction with the, the entire team, the breast surgeons, the radiation oncologists, metal, medical oncologists. Um, typically, uh, if we know that somebody's going to need uh, radiation, uh, we might put in a tissue expander we don't typically like to move your own tissue and have that radiated. Um, so we might start with a, a tissue expander, expander, which is a temporary device. And then six to eight months after radiation, uh, we would go back, uh, remove the tissue expander, 
and fill that space with either your own tissue or an implant. Uh, a lot of times we're using something called fat grafting, which is liposuction uh, mm -hmm. of the abdomen, hips, or thighs, uh, purification of the fat, and then we transfer that to the breast. Uh, so there's a lot of, a lot of techni techniques that we can use to uh, sort of ameliorate that, uh, that radiation change. Uh, but we definitely, uh, part, of the, part of the team and uh, can help guide patients through that process. And then after, let's say we go back in to have our mammograms, are they um, easy to still see through whatever is, uh, is, is put in for that reconstruction where the mammography can still see what's needed? Yeah, so most of the time after mastectomy, patients don't need mammograms. If it's something that the, the breast surgeon or uh, medical oncologist uh, wants a mammogram, uh, it's still possible to do them. Uh, we know that, uh, oddly enough, breast implants, whether done for uh, cosmetic purposes or aesthetic purposes uh, or uh, reconstructive purposes, actually decreases the risk of breast cancer, number one. Uh, number two, it, it typically provides a stable platform behind the, uh, any of the, of the normal breast tissue or uh, the breast tissue that's left after a mastectomy uh, so that it makes it a little bit easier to feel uh, a new lump or mass. Uh, so, and then uh, typically, especially with an implant, uh, we follow those patients for life. Uh, so it's, it's uh, I think you get ongoing uh, surveillance, and we can pick up something early if something new develops. Wow. Oh, that's very helpful. After a reconstruction, what is the typical recovery like? Uh, so again, it's going to depend on the type of reconstruction, uh, but for an implant-based reconstruction, usually the first uh, two to three weeks after the first stage, you're a little sore and slowed down, uh, but then by about four weeks, you're usually getting back to most daily activities. And by six weeks, you're back back able to go to the gym and work out, that sort of thing. Um, typically, an implant-based reconstruction is going to involve a few stages, um, but the the first surgery is usually the biggest. Okay. And the one thing, the, the one part about recovery that we certainly don't want to see, but I guess it's realistic, is that the cancer can return. Yeah, cancer, uh, unfortunately, can return. And so that's why it's really important uh, for ongoing uh, appointments with your, your breast surgeon, your medical oncologist, uh, following up with your plastic surgeon, uh, so that if, if something comes back or, or a new cancer develops, we can catch it early and get it treated. Okay. Now, there is an opportunity for people to get more information. And can you tell us about the uh, awareness opportunity event coming up on the 16th of this month? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so October of every year, uh, there's a Breast Reconstruction Awareness Day. Uh, and it's, uh, so we're hosting an event uh, on the 16th. And it's uh, to promote breast reconstruction awareness. We want uh, women to know that um, that this is an option for them. Uh, there's a federal law that requires insurance companies to cover breast reconstruction uh, if their insurance plan uh, covers a mastectomy. So this is available to, to everyone that um, is undergoing a mastectomy or partial mastectomy. Uh, and it's, uh, it's available right here in Fresno. And so uh, we just want to uh, promote awareness of that. Uh, we're hosting an event that uh, is for uh, previous patients, for future patients. Uh, we'll have vendors, we'll have food, uh, drinks, uh, swag gifts, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know our our nipple tattoo artist will be here. Uh, so it's a, it's just a chance to talk with uh, the surgeons, talk with um, the vendors that that supply some of the the implants and products that uh, we use during. Uh, during the process. Uh, so we would encourage uh, uh, anyone that is interested uh, or if they're looking to support a family member uh, through the process uh, to come come see us and, and talk with us. Wonderful. Well, you said you've been doing this for so many years. I, I'd like to know, what are some of the questions or concerns that you most get from, uh, from women who are your patients? So I think a lot of the a lot of the questions that they have, um, we've kind of 
touched on, uh, recovery process, what's the process like, what are the risks, that sort of thing. I think the thing that's really helpful is uh, pictures, and we have picture books here in the office that they can look at so they can understand what their, their choices are, whether it's uh, no reconstruction, implant-based reconstruction, uh, or using her own tissue uh, so that she can understand the process and um, what, what she would be signing up for. Okay. It, oh, do you ever have male patients? Uh, so not for, we, we do take care of a lot of male patients, but not for uh, breast cancer typically. Uh, but um, certainly uh, as medical knowledge of uh, genetic risk factors for breast cancer ha has been identified, uh, males can get breast cancer. Um, and so that's something that if it runs in your family, we encourage genetic testing. Um, so, okay. Uh, but All right. typically, typically, they wouldn't undergo reconstruction. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dr. Lemker, thank you very much for your insight today. And, um, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the people watching feel maybe if they're in this situation right now, a slight sense of calm and hope for their future as they're on this journey. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I hope that as well. Thank you for having me on the show. And uh, hopefully we'll get to welcome uh, a lot of people to the event on the 16th. I hope so. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. You too, Kim. Hi, I'm Monty Torres with Fox 26 News on YouTube. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel, where we have loads of great content for you to choose from. And while you're here, why not click on the subscribe button right here? That way you can stay in touch with all the latest breaking news, everything news related within the Central Valley. And thank you for watching.